coming directly from Irvine, Scotland to the United States in the late 1880s. My mother's family tree holds a fascinating history of men who built the railways leading from the southern states to the north, generations of men who worked the dangerous coal mines of the Midwest, and those who fought the most harsh conditions imaginable during times of war in our nation's infancy. One line is the Irving family, my mother's maiden name. I began my interest in family history when I realized that I have no idea who my great-grandfather Matthew Irving was. He was a first-generation American boy just before the 1900s, but he was a man shrouded in mystery. Long gone even before my mother was born, Matthew was the son of Hamilton Irving, our family's immigrant. This was where our journey started. Before we left the comforts of Illinois, much research had already been done. We knew that my great-great-grandpa Hamilton was a hard-working man who did his best to maintain his family's status in the community. Matthew joined the 339th Polar Bear Infantry in 1918 during World War I. Matthew's son Arthur, who is my grandfather, was also born in Terre Haute. I was anxious to see what we could find that we didn't already know, and so we took off on the road to see what was in store for us. As we turned off the interstate to drive alongside the Wabash River in Indiana, I started feeling excited. We didn't know what we were gonna find, but we were hoping to find the actual home that Matthew lived in with his wife. Our first interesting find was quite by accident. As we were driving, we happened to notice a sign outside of a cement company with the last name Irving. So for fun, we stopped to take a picture. Seeing the name on the sign made me realize that this was an area that my family came from and it really started to make me feel a little bit more confident that we were going to find something having to do with Matthew or my grandpa or my great great grandpa. I was more excited than ever to keep pushing forward on the interstate. As we drove past several cemeteries, I wondered, is anyone there related to me? I started feeling really excited about what we were planning to do for the day. And for the first time, I really started feeling close to Matthew Irving. Driving through the town, I started to think, was my grandpa on this road at one point? We were headed to his home. I couldn't wait to see if it was still standing. As we drove through the town, I started feeling nostalgic past the railroad and past the railway station, there were tiny homes off to the left. It made me wonder if perhaps maybe my grandpa knew the people that once lived in those homes. We drove up past an old field and it took me a while to realize that the field that lay before me was actually where the old house sat. Even though the house was no longer there, my mom and I weren't deterred. We instead decided to go to the public library that just so happened to be right across the street. It was a long shot to find anything, and even though we left empty-handed, my mom did find this book about Tucson, Arizona. She thought it was pretty funny. It was. Oddly, even though we didn't find anything, I was still very charged and ready for the next adventure on our map. We decided to head towards Terre Haute, right to the heart of the city. We were gonna look for the house in 1910 that Hamilton, his wife, and my great-grandpa, Matthew, would have lived in. Hopefully, this one was still standing. But first, a little humor, Sutton style. Hey, by the way, don't let me forget to go down Poplar Street. I'm not looking at you, I promise. No, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> Right on the right. Okay. Um, so it's right after Swan. There's uh, a little block right here. And yeah. So we go past Swan right here. Okay. There's no stop. And it's 423. 423. 417. Holy crap, Mom. Your destination is on the right. That's it. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. It was still standing. So in 1910, Hamilton Irving, his wife and children uh, were homeowners. Mm -hmm. Were homeowners and lived right here. I'll be right back. 
So this is the home of my great-great-grandpa and my great-great-grandma and my great-grandpa here in Terre Haute. Yes, it had been turned into a frat house, but I couldn't believe it. It was still standing. The corbels, the steeple, the architecture, the amazing solid wood door with all the original looking glass. I couldn't believe that Hamilton and everyone that was in my family that I never got to meet had lived there. Feeling lucky, we drove away from the house and we decided to head to the library to see if they had any other records that we hadn't found yet. Unbelievably, they did. Hamilton's name came up first, a death notice in the paper. It was exciting, but then I found a death notice for my great grandpa Matthew in the paper as well. We had never found anything like that to the present day. That is it, that's it. To some it may seem small, but to us it was a victory. We never realized that Matthew was still in contact with his family once he left Terre Haute after the war. He still contacted his sister. She knew he had passed, and that's how it ended up in the paper. Thank you, library. Our next challenge was even greater. We were off to find the childhood home where my grandpa was born. My mother had never seen it. We were only using a map that he drew about 30 years ago. That's it, that's the drive. That is? That's it, yep. Okay. There's the railroad tracks. Yes, there it is. I'm getting the photo album. There's the shale pit. That's it. The barn's gone and everything, but that's it. I'm telling you a bit. So I pull in. I'm going to pull in. I couldn't believe it. Within the first 10 minutes, we found the house. The map my grandpa drew was perfect. It led us right to it. Street names and everything. And it was still standing. I started to realize this was the first time my mom had ever looked at the house with her own eyes. Yeah. Oh, they have ponies. Oh my God, they have horses? Yes, they do. Oh. If anybody's car is here, I'm almost tempted to go to the door and knock and explain what we're here about. And that's exactly what she did. No fear, she walked right up to the door to tell the woman that lived there that her father had been born in this very house. My mom. Is showing the woman that lives in her dad's house, her his childhood home, old pictures of where, and she's just asking if she could take pictures. Well, they're both hand talkers, apparently. She did it. She was able to swoon the woman over and explain that she's going to stand on this woman's yard and take some pictures of her father's childhood home for the first time in her life. Oh, he was born here. Of this. Of this. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so the barn would have been back there somewhere. Okay. And I know it might have set where that brick house is. That actual know. house? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So what does it feel like knowing you're standing at your father's childhood home? She she hasn't processed it yet. Yeah. Where did I 
just put the... Oh, I, I have it in my oh, hand. You got it. Okay. Yep. All right. Yay, Mom. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so very much. Heck, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Becky. Yep. And little Reuben is what they call him then, because his hair was kind of reddish colored. Aw. Little Reuben. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and there's the poles. Yep. The new, new poles yep. now, but, you know. Yeah. Um, That's right where it is. Down the hill. Yep. That's the view down the hill. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Without hardly even trying, we found it, we were there, and we got to duplicate some of the pictures that were in the family photo album that have been there for decades. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's so cool, Mom. <laughs> if happiness could be found in one photograph, this is that photograph. And almost by some mystery of fate, a train passed on the very tracks my grandpa used to play on. Denise Marie Irving, you just visited your child father's childhood home. What are you going to do next? We're going to his grandpa's house. Yeah, where he's... Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to the cemetery. That's why we're laughing. Okay, okay. How odd that a Scottish family is buried in a cemetery as a family called Highland Lake Cemetery. Of course. That is section nine. Yeah. This little area over on our right hand side, mm -hmm. section nine. And it's grave number 78 and it's a double grave. Right. So I bet we will. Hmm. Well, we had the picture of it, yep. right? So we know kind of what it looks like. And those are older graves over there, so yeah. I'm going to swing yeah. around towards the bottom. Yeah, yeah. We'll find it, we'll find it. The older grave's up there. Let's see. We're getting warmer. The graveyard was massive. I felt hopeless that we would never find it. And just then, I happened to see some deer. Yeah, yeah, because it goes up the whole hill. Deer! <gasps> oh, 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 hi guys. Oh. Hey, uh, Bambi, have you seen my, <laughs> seen my grandpa? Bambi, get back here. Mother! <laughs> Good one. Those now they're saying, too. they're following us, they're following us. Those are some older ones, too. I can't remember, did the picture look like it was on a hill? Oh, there's more over there, more over there. Yeah. I didn't want to tell my mom I didn't think we'd find it. So I decided to stop. And I got out, right where the deer stopped. I didn't even realize that the deer had led us directly to where I needed to be. I'm gonna go feed a baby deer. Okay. It is. it is. So we drove all around this massive hill, all the way to over to the other side, and I just said, all right, well, I guess I'm gonna stop right about here. And then I saw the double headstone. There's no way in hell that can be it. Is that the first grave I look for? And I get out, and sure enough, my great-great-grandparents are buried right here. It was almost kind of unbelievable that the deer led us directly to the grave that we were looking for in this massive cemetery. So we wanted to continue our luck just a little bit further and head out one more place. We were going to try and look for the final home of Hamilton, my great-great-grandpa. Yeah, so that little area right, pretty much right there yeah. would have been their last house mm -hmm. in 1930 before he went into the hospital. Yeah. And so, that's the end of our story. It ends there. Yeah. As we drove away from Terre Haute and waved goodbye to the Wabash River, we felt a little hungry. 
Serendipitously, we found a place named after my little brother called Benjamin's, and we decided to eat there. With three new documents and an understanding of who we had been following, I felt like we had actually accomplished something. I got to know my family more. With the Irving family done, I realized the much bigger challenge that lay right ahead of us, trying to find the family of Matthew's wife, Maud, and her mother, Alice. <laughs>